All right. Hello, guys. Welcome back to my channel. So today's sponsored interview is brought to you by Internex, and I would like to start by thanking the founder and CEO of the project, Fran, for coming on my channel. So welcome. Hi. Hi. So Internex is a relatively new project. Could you give my viewers a quick summary of the purpose of the project and your goals? Right. Yeah. So Internex is a is an innovation company. Uh, it's a tech company that strives to disrupt uh, different markets through the use of revolutionary technology. So right now, we just happen to be using decentralized technology to disrupt the cloud industry. Uh, but that's not our end goal. That's one of the you know, milestones we have along you know, a, a very you know, big road. Long, long path of things you want to do? Yeah. Very cool. So why cloud computing? Why start with cloud computing and cloud resources? What fueled your interest in kind of creating that project for this purpose? Right. So I've been involved in the cloud industry for around four or five years. So before starting Internex, I was working at a company called Hostinger. Um, it's, a, it's a big web hosting company. And I had my, my own project called OneSite, which was also a web hosting project. And you know the, the, it was fine. And my project was also growing uh, pretty fast. We had around 10,000 customers uh, by the, you know, right before I started Internex. Um, but the, the web hosting industry is not that exciting, I think. So it's pretty traditional. And I thought of ways of you know making making it more m making my business grow more, and you know I started Internex after looking into decentralization and, and how to decentralize the cloud and, and, and websites. So I sold one site um, and I left Hostinger and I started Internex. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, I mean you're right. You know, web hosting isn't isn't the most glamorous uh, thing to be involved in. Nope. So what sets you guys apart from your closest competitors? The first ones that come to mind for me are like SIA and storage. Right. Yeah. So that's mainly, that's mainly, uh, you know, that's the two big competitors we have. Um, what sets us apart is that I think we're targeting different kinds of customers. So they're targeting very early adopters, uh, like developers and people who don't mind using, you know, a very, you know, a very basic interface or a command line interface to, you know, to upload files. Um, but we're targeting an early majority and late majority. And how we're doing that is by focusing on, um, on user experience. So our architecture, in fact, like we, we, we actually used a uh, storage architecture. We, we started from there five months ago. And what we're working on right now, we're working on separate paths, but, you know, we, we're just improving it uh, as we go. But we're not trying to different, differentiate from these two companies in terms of architecture, because they've been around for a while. And they know their stuff um, very well. So how we're trying to differentiate is by the approach we have. So we're targeting different kinds of customers. Uh, and that's basically how we differentiate. OK. So I mean, what would be the, the customers that you're particularly targeting? Yeah. So in the beginning, we're targeting an early majority, which will consist of crypto people who, you know, who love decentralization, love blockchain, love crypto, but not necessarily are developers. Because there is a part that, that you know that are developers because they work here from you know 2011 or whatever, um, but you know the, there's also an early majority that not, not not necessarily knows how to use a command line interface, but are also in love with with decentralization and security and privacy. So that kind of customers are the ones who we're targeting. If you check our website internet.com/cloud, you can see our uh, how our user interfaces look like, and they're pretty. They're pretty interesting, and that's mainly what we're focusing on. Okay, very cool. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it is hard for people who want to get involved in some of these projects early on if they have to use a command line and stuff like that. Yeah. I know for myself, a lot of the things that I've wanted to do, I haven't been able to do because I'm just not capable of running and doing something like that on a computer. So it's cool that you're trying to kind of make it a middle path for people so they can still do it and get involved. Right. So obviously, ease of use is the key for adoption for any project. So besides, you know, your user interface, what other ways are you trying to make um, user interface or being user friendly a priority for you guys? Yeah. So uh, as you mentioned, uh, our user interface uh, is something that we're really focusing on, and having a very, you know, uh, phenomenal uh, user experience uh, from the very beginning to the very end. Um, so that's something we're focusing on. But also in terms of marketing and the message we're trying to get across. I think you know that we're focusing on marketing a lot, and I, I don't think you know neither of these two companies have done much marketing at all. Um, so yeah, so in terms of marketing, I think we you know we're putting a lot of effort in there as well. Um, yeah, and, and that's basically uh, how we how we plan to target the, the mass market. 
Well, yeah, I mean, getting it out there and telling people, hey, try this, it's not as difficult, or um, you might be interested, give it a shot. You know, yeah. people aren't going to know about a project if you're not marketing and putting it out there, so that's smart. Right. Um, so what would be your plan for making Internex easily accessible for customers outside of the crypto world? So how do you, marketing to crypto people is a little bit easier than marketing to the average person. So what's your plan there? Right. So right now in terms of marketing, we are, you know, focusing on crypto channels, crypto telegram stuff, uh, Reddit, uh, you know, Twitter, et cetera. Um, and these kind of people will help us, you know, with the beta that we're releasing next quarter, uh, they will help us make a, a stronger product. Um, and once we have a you know a strong enough architecture and product, and we're confident enough about our, about our product, mm -hmm. and we have mobile mobile apps, etc., um, you know we're, we're going to start focusing on on the mainstream market. Uh, so people who have no idea of what crypto is and just want to pay in fiat, uh, they want a simple service like Dropbox, but more secure and more private. So basically, we're trying to offer that these kind of people a service just like iCloud or Dropbox. Pretty much the same in terms of price. Pretty much the same in terms of, in terms of user uh, in terms of user, user interface, uh, but better in terms of security and privacy. Cool. So, wh when do you think, as far as getting it out there for people who are not interested in crypto, what's your timeline on that? Do you think that it's going to be? Are you trying to do both at the same time, or? Yeah. So we we we'll start with that. I think in quarter four this year or quarter one next year. So targeting the mainstream market. Uh, right now, we're mainly focusing our efforts in you know the crypto. Environment because I don't think we have something to offer uh, the mainstream market yet. So, you know, our beta, we're only going to be accepting internet token payments and it's still a beta. So, you know, early, an early majority is the one that signs up for betas, not an, a late majority that wants a working product and something extremely, extremely simple. So, before we reach there, we will we, we'll be targeting crypto uh, people. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, like you said, you know, starting with crypto, it's going to be easier to get the project out there and get people interested because they're already interested in crypto as a whole. So getting your footing there and then moving on is definitely the smartest way to do it. So why did you guys choose Ethereum as your platform? And have you had any thoughts about possibly migrating to your own blockchain? Yeah, so in terms of blockchain, people sometimes, sometimes confuse blockchain with decentralization. And, you know, blockchain is a decentralized technology, but... It, it's, it's not useful for everything, as you probably know. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> so I mean, we, we're not using blockchain for a file storage uh, system. So although it's a decentralized architecture, uh, blockchain is not something very suitable for file storage. It's not scalable and it's got all kinds of issues. So, um, so yeah, so in terms of blockchain, we're mainly using it for a payment system uh, with that token. Uh, and, and why we chose... Um, our token to be an ERC-20 is because it was the simplest, most solid way to build a token. Because it's not something uh, that needs to be... A token doesn't do much. I mean, it's just a payment system for our platform. So we didn't really need to do rocket science there. We wanted to get it out as soon as possible and with something you know reliable. And that's, I believe, Ethereum's blockchain. Yeah, I mean, Ethereum definitely has a good reputation as far as building on top of it. And like you said, making an ERC-20 token is pretty simple. I actually, I made one uh, as a joke for my Discord channel just to kind of give it a test to see how it worked. Um, so cool. it's it's nice. Uh, yeah, like you said, it's, it's very easy. It's it's quick to get into, um, and it definitely serves a purpose. Yeah, th th does your Ethereum token have a name or not? Uh, yeah, it's CandorCoin. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, uh, so everybody, there's like a tip bot in my Discord or whatever, and people use it. They think it's okay. funny, so. Okay. So uh, I came across a Medium post from May 22nd that stated the purpose um, that you're, you're moving your operations to California. So what right. is the purpose behind that move? Yeah, so we didn't uh, do a big uh, crowd sale. We did, a, like, as I told you uh, a year ago, I was working at Hostinger and I was uh, you know, 20 years old. So I didn't have millions of dollars in my, in my bank account to start a crowd sale and start marketing it. So with the money I had from selling one side and what I had saved up from Hostinger, I, I started the crowd sale and we didn't raise that much, but it was enough for us to start. Because as a matter of fact, I think before this crowd sale hype thing, uh, startups started with nothing, right? And uh, as time went by, they, they, they started making revenues and started getting investors in. So we're lucky that we started with something, right? Uh, but uh, the, the main purpose of moving to California is that we, in 2018, we expect to do a Series A to raise more funds. So... I think in California, it's going to be much, much more feasible to do that and find better investors. Uh, so that's the main purpose. And then right now we're all working remotely. 
Um, but I think centralizing the operation somewhat uh, is, is, is something that we should do in terms of you know, increasing the efficiency and productivity of our team. So since we're moving to California, we're also going to set up offices there. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, California is kind of the hub for technology as far as Silicon Valley goes. So if you're looking for investors, that's definitely the place to go. And I agree with you that centralizing, you know, at least the major people in the project is going to make it way easier for you guys to communicate, get work done and just kind of be on the same page. Totally. So um, tell me a little bit about your new partnership with BlackBerry. Right. So as I told you, um, we like b before we can talk before, before we can target the mainstream market, we want to make sure that our product is actually more secure than Dropbox. So although fundamentally decentralized a decentralized, a decentralized architecture is more secure than a centralized one, companies like Dropbox or Google they have millions of dollars that they can invest in their architecture to make sure that it's secure. So in order to make sure that ours is a, is more secure than theirs, we, we, we have to make sure that everything is very well tied up. So we are going to be running a lot of security audits uh, with ha uh, hacking agencies. We didn't talk with uh, Hacken. I think you actually did a video on them a yes, few days ago. Yes, I did. Uh, so w we will very likely be using them amongst other companies uh, you know, to, to make sure that our architecture is, is solid enough. Because you know, storage probably doesn't have that issue, right? Because they, they can just build all kinds of cool stuff uh, and it doesn't really matter if it has bugs uh, because they're not targeting corporations or the mainstream market yet. So the, the people they're targeting, they're expecting the kind of those kind of bugs. And as a matter of fact, they're probably even going even to help them fix them because they're developers usually. So, but the kind of the kind of market we're targeting uh, doesn't expect you know uh, 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 an infrastructure with with all kinds of issues. So that's why we 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 partner with all these kind of companies. So BlackBerry right now is a security company. And basically, it's an it's a it's a knowledge transfer uh, partnership. They have all, all kinds of knowledge in terms of security, so they're going to help us out, uh, you know, by by uh, you know transferring this knowledge they have in uh, spotting vulnerabilities, encryption, etc., uh, into us, and that will certainly help us build a stronger infrastructure as well. Yeah, security for you guys definitely would be a priority. Obviously, you're storing people's files, people's information, and things like that. So, and hacking is definitely a, a really good project to be partner awesome. with. So that's very cool that you guys are all kind of all working together. I like to see crypto projects work with other crypto projects and make the space stronger. It's it's good to have those kinds of uh, friendships. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. As a matter of fact, um, Storj, uh, like I, 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 I don't know, I really like uh, talking to companies like Storj or MadeSafe or Saya because I think we're kind of on the same side. Like we, we're all you know starting uh, and you know trying to take. The big guys of the market. So, I don't know. I, I really like talking to these guys, uh, but for some reason, the guys at Storage they don't they, they don't seem to like us a lot. They they, they do see us as a threat, uh, whereas we see them as you know companions. And I mean, it's important to have that thought process because I you know every interview I do, I probably say this every time is that a success for one crypto project is you know a success for all of them. If we're all striving for adoption, then. Making partnerships, working together, and bonding, you know, and using each other's strengths is important. Not seeing each other as competition or, you know, being aggressive about it. So, yeah, totally. Um, do you have any other partnerships on the horizon that you're allowed to share? I mean, we've already partnered with Civic, uh, as you probably know, and we had, we are working with uh, some other companies um, to to you know partner with them. Uh, Hacking is one of them uh, that will be helping us out as well. And we're working with more companies that will be certainly partnering with us in the, in the next weeks. Very cool, very cool. So what is a part of the project that you're most excited about or something that you like the most? I mean, what I like the most, I think, is the uncertainty we have every day of pretty much everything. You know, it's really exciting, I think. I, I think you really have to love entrepreneurship and new tech to be a founder um, because you have all kinds of issues all the time from any point of view, legal, uh, development, like technical, marketing, everything. You have all kinds of, you know, challenges all the time. And that's, you know, I think the company that uh, kind of fixes the problems the faster and the most, you know, in the most effective manner is the one that actually is successful in the end. Because I think we, on a business and on a personal level, we all have all kinds of problems. Uh, but the ones who can, I don't know, adapt and, and kind of, fix them, I think, are the ones who are happiest and the most successful in business. Um, so, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I mean, it, adopting, growing, improving, and starting starting a project and, and watching it be successful is definitely has to be probably the most satisfying thing for somebody to do. So, especially in the crypto space, because obviously there's so much going on all the time. So, yeah. um, do you want to give like a quick overview of what the just the major components of your project are? Yeah. So, uh, as I said, internet, internet has a very broad uh, kind of objective, and we'll be working on that uh, th throughout the next years. And X Cloud is a decentralized uh, cloud storage service, pretty much like Dropbox, okay. but potentially more secure and more, and more private as soon as we can, uh, you know, reach that, uh, that the milestone. Uh, and that's what we're working on at xCloud. Um, the beta will be out next quarter, uh, hopefully. And yeah, it, it, will, it will have a seven day free trial and then people can just renew for the plan they like. But we expect, uh, you know, people from our community to be signing up for this. We don't expect mainstream guys yet, as I, as I mentioned before. And yeah, and people can also, you know, uh, donate the resources of their laptops to earn money by by hosting people's files. So yeah, so that's also pretty cool. And we will be rolling out the mobile apps for our uh, for our interface uh, for, for for xCloud basically in the next months as well. Very cool. Yeah, mobile apps are definitely becoming the more popular things that I'm seeing people asking for. You know, doing the beta and then okay, so now when can I use it on my cell phone? Um, yeah, so it's, it's funny how people's priorities have shifted. Mm -hmm. um, so what are your upcoming product releases or announcements that you're looking forward to? Obviously, you know, you talked about the beta, but is there anything else on the horizon? Stable version. <laughs> yeah. A quarter after. Uh, so we expect to have the stable version in quarter four. Um, yeah, so pretty much, I mean, it's pretty much there already. The, the beta is coming out in the next couple of months and the stable version in the uh, few months after. So, uh, so yeah, so that's what was coming up. And then the mobile apps, uh, they are expected to be coming in quarter one, 2018, but I think we may have them earlier. Uh, we'll see. And yeah, so that's what we, we have, you know, coming up. How many people are on the team? How many of you guys have working on the project? We, we are over 10 people. We are around 12. So uh, between developers, advisors, marketing, uh, we are a very dynamic team uh, and we're constantly growing and we have people who help us. That's why I said around 12, because we've also got you know, people who help us in our community uh, as moderators and we have advisors, we have all kinds of people helping us out, a uh, legal team as well. So it really depends. Uh, if you count them all, we have a lot of people. Yeah. If you count four, depends we, on the day, right? Yeah, it depends on the day. Uh, but yeah, if you count, the, you know, the core people, we are around 10. Cool. So what are your plans for 2018 and where do you see the project in like, say a year or so? Yeah, so, I mean, the plan for this year, uh, yeah, basically, you know, finishing our product, uh, yeah, and, and you know, and having a stable version of a, a stable version of our product, yeah, and then during two thousand nineteen, we may we, we may we'll mainly be focusing on growing the the product, so doing more marketing in terms of uh, reaching out to the mainstream people uh, through YouTube and, and through through you know kinds of, of channels. Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, we will be doing the Series A, and mainly we'll be focusing on growing, growing the numbers. Uh, so this year has been the year of basically development, uh, the most like the most fundamental part of our architecture. And then the next year will be, you know, we, we will of course keep improving our architecture, but we'll mainly be focusing on growing uh, the numbers. So we will see how it goes. We expect to be able to reach around a hundred thousand customers within just over a year from now, which That's is a lot. Awesome. Yeah, that is a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. Um, but what we're seeing right now, we've got a beta waiting list, and the numbers we're seeing are very, are, are actually pretty, you know, over the the, the expectations we, the expectation we had. So we think, I don't know, I think we, we, we'll be able to reach that 100K in just over a year from now, which would be really cool. Yeah, you guys should have a party when you do that. <laughs> Celebrate and do something. But yeah. uh, I mean, so those are all like the, the questions that I have for you that I had prepped. Is there anything else that you want to add? Anything else that we've missed that you think that we need to include? Mm, I think that's pretty much everything. Uh, cool. Yeah, uh, people who you know want to be part of something that, I don't know, is, is trying to do something cool and exciting and trying to do things better, uh, they're welcome to you know join us at Internex. Uh, because I don't know, they, they're not only buying our products. Uh, they're part of a really cool project and part of our community and they certainly help us improve. Absolutely. The community is always very useful. 
Um, so I will leave all the links for your website, your roadmap, your Twitter, and your Medium in the description. So if anybody's interested in checking out the project, you can look below. And uh, I want to thank you again, Fran, for coming on and chatting with me. Thank you. Bye-bye.